Okay guys, what is up, you fine folks? Tristan here, Anger Markets and More. And I wanna make a video about bugs. Let's talk about bugs. So we all know that bugs wanna eat your plants. And here in South Florida, we get a lot of, a lot of things that wanna eat your plants. Uh, one of the main things that we're constantly battling are thrips, um, that is singular and plural, thrips. They're these tiny, tiny little, I don't know if they're a midge or a fly. I don't know what they're related to, uh, but they're teeny, tiny little insects. And they, they pierce, they suck on the juices of the flower. They mainly affect flowers. They, I, I'm sure that they, they pierce the foliage too, but they don't tend to cause as much problem with the foliage. It's usually a flower thing. And the Western flower thrip is usually the main culprit or the chili thrip, which we now have. So thrips let's talk about them we'll talk about some other things too but mostly i want to talk about thrips right now because that's what's going on here at ingram orchids and more here at casa de ingram um we're getting a lot of thrip damage and you know i know exactly um how to get rid of them and the best way to usually get rid of them is a uh, you know a good insecticide rotation of a, a topical and a systemic and usually my go-to would be something like Safari or Orthene. Orthene would probably be my first choice. And I like to combine Orthene with Bifenthrin, uh, which is a topical, Orthene being locally systemic. Um, so, but here's the thing, guys. Um, I'm not saying that you should be worried about, you know, poisoning the earth. I'm not gonna say gloom and doom, because I, I do my fair share of spraying some of these chemicals. Um, but, this year I wanted to try something different just to see. So I wanted to try stop spraying some of these uh, these more uh, wide coverage insecticides like orthene and, and bifenthrin in that and wanted to try doing something a little bit natural uh, using some uh, beneficial, my, or beneficial insects, beneficial microbes, that sort of thing. And you ask, why? No, it's not. I'm not a hippie. I'm a big proponent of using um, pesticides when they're needed um, but mostly just because I'm just interested to see if it works um, you know I do have two little two little girls that I worry about spraying so much uh, insecticide around the house when they play outside and a lot of these insecticides don't harm humans mammals uh, very much but they are slightly toxic and you know uh, kids put things in their mouths and you know, it's, it's not great. Sure, it may not harm them, but sometimes I do. It's in there lingering in the back of my mind about the kids putting stuff in their mouth or coming into contact with it. And if it was just me, I would have no qualms um, spraying it because if I was only hurting myself, uh, it'd be a different story. But just for this, the sake of it, I'm not saying if you're spraying these, uh, these chemicals that you should stop. That's that's not what I'm saying. Not at all. In fact, I, I still would recommend that um, if you're not real accustomed to dealing with uh, integrated pest management, um, I would say sp spray spray routinely as you've been doing, especially if you have a lot of orchids and you have a lot of money invested in them, because pests are not just they're not just a cosmetic thing. They they can they can cause a lot of different problems which we're not going to get into but um so i wanted to try these biological methods so what are these biological methods so there are a lot of companies that sell these um things like you can get ladybugs everybody knows you buy ladybugs for your garden helps cut down on the pest problems in your tomato garden whatever so ladybugs are great but recently i've been doing some research and i found out about there are a lot of mites there are a lot of beneficial predatory mites. There are a lot of beneficial predatory nematodes. Uh, we usually think of nematodes uh, as like the problematic ones, like the ones that cause like root, root disease and stuff in your garden. Uh, but there are some predatory nematodes that eat other insects. There are also predatory beetles. We mentioned ladybugs. Those are a type of beetle. There's other beetles that eat, eat, uh, eat these pesky problematic bugs. There is also lacewings. Lacewings, you know, they eat a lot of things. They're little larvae or little 
uh, little insect eating machines. You'll see them, they, they call them trash bugs, I think. Sometimes you'll be outside and you'll see a little thing crawling and it looks like a giant ball of just dead insects and stuff. And that's usually a, it's usually a lacewing larva. They collect the dead bodies of all their enemies as a warning to their, as a warning to their foes not to mess with them. Um, I think it's really for camouflage, but I like to say that. So what I did was, you know, I ordered some of these mites and I ordered some lace wings. Uh, not very many of them. Uh, just enough to, you know, you put out just one time just to see. Uh, and I stopped spraying orthane. You know, I've mentioned in my videos because I've had a lot of thrip damage that I haven't, I'm like, oh, I'm behind on my spraying. And really that's, that's what I've, I've been doing. I've been putting it off because I wanted to try and get some of these, uh, these systemics out of the plant system for a while so that I can start introducing these beneficial uh, these beneficial bugs. So what I did was um, I got some of these uh, hanging sachets. I'll just go ahead and show you one. There are a few different species of mites. Um, this is Californicus. Oh, I should have. I cannot remember the genus name. Oh, shame on me. And I got uh, Swarsky mites. So those are the two mite species. I bought a bunch of those sachets. You hang them here. You know, you know, interspersed in your plants. Um, ideally, not where they can get a lot of direct sunlight. As I'm saying that, this one's in the sun. Uh, but these hanging little sashes, they have these little holes, these perforations in them. And the mites, they crawl out and they go looking for their prey. And I should say that Swarsky mites are a, a pretty general uh, predator. These uh, usually eat things like thrips, uh, other mites. Californicus, I think, can be a generalist, but I think... Um, Californicus is usually used to uh, to fight other mites. So spider mites are a real insidious pest. They're really hard to kill with a lot of pesticides because they're a mite, just like uh, they're in the arachnid family, you know, with spiders and such. So they're not really insects, and a lot of them are really hard to get rid of. So what I did was hoping that introducing some predatory mites that eat spider mites, I could, you know, cut down on the population enough to either... Uh, maybe not, you probably don't get rid of them uh, because of the predator-prey relationship, but enough to keep them in bay that you don't notice them. And the same thing with the Swarsky mites. Um, I got those, hoping that those would cut down on the thrip population enough to, that I wouldn't notice enough damage to want me to just nuclear spray, uh, blanket spray the entire collection every week. So far, I've only done this for, a, uh, it's only been a, uh, about a few weeks to a month. It's hard to say for sure uh, how well it's working because I already did have quite a large, uh, healthy and thriving population of thrips uh, living here in my collection. And a lot of these companies that sell these things will well, tell you they should not be used as a, a curative, uh, but more so as a preventative. If you've got extreme pest populations already, oftentimes it's too much for uh, the, and, uh, the the beneficials to, to take care of once it's out of control. Uh, but either way, I did it anyways, just to see. And I noticed that um, this one had some, some thr thrips damage on it. And I did have a hanging sachet on here. The wind probably blew it away. But it was on there long enough that I'm sure the mites, the predatory mites, made their, made their way around. And when I opened these sachets, you did see... I mean, you could, when you get the bag of them in the mail, oftentimes you open them up and there's like thousands and thousands of these little mites just crawling around in the bag. You can see them. Um, they, they're moving around. They're hustling and bustling. They're looking for a meal. And I'm sure a lot of them have probably dispersed out of their little baggies by now because it's been weeks. Um, but if you see any of these hanging little paper things in my videos, that's what it is. Um, they're sachets of these uh, Swarsky mites and Californicus mites um, trying to cut down on some of the thrips and spider mites. And I did get some lacewing larvae uh, to try and uh, prevent scale because apparently lacewings do um, attack juvenile scale. Um, whether they will be able to keep it in shake or not, I don't know. 
all you got to do to know if you got scale is to go find your butterfly orchids here in Cicli Tampensis and look it'll be the first plant in your collection to get scale maybe I have something to show you as an example of, of severe thrips damage and I will go out and we'll be back shortly to show you oh what was this I may have had a third mite Oh yes, this I thought I forgot all about these. The cucumerous. Um, I think these were more of a generalist predatory mite too. I think they they ate all sorts of things like thrips, uh, um, other mites and stuff like that. Whether these mites are just competing to try and kill each other, I I don't know. I don't know enough about it to say whether they are okay to release in tandem together. Uh, but I did anyways. Figured there's enough uh, enough prey around that they um, that they'll have something to eat on, but this is kind of an ongoing project, and I've noticed a lot of thrip damage, and I'm really just I want to spray so bad because you know we work so hard on these orchids to see them flower, and I don't want the thrips to destroy them all, but I also don't want to destroy all my good my good bugs that I've just put out. That being said. I know some other orchid growers who work commercially who say they've used a lot of these before and they still spray some insecticides when they need to and they still find um, they still find their predatory mites alive when looking under like a, a microscope or or under a loop because oftentimes orchid growers you know they will take samples of their flowers in their greenhouses and such and they will look for these sort of pest and and your good bugs and how true that is i don't know um a lot of these things like orthene they're not labeled for mites so i don't know if they would outright kill the good mites that i've released um but I, I figure it probably can't be good for them so that's one of the main reasons i've been so reluctant to to spray some insecticides even though i have an ongoing thrip problem is i've got this running experiment trying to see if the uh, if these beneficial guys are going to start out competing the bad guys and you know if it doesn't here in the next few weeks if if i put out some more mites and uh some more good guy bugs and i don't see any the results that i'm looking for i may just bite the bullet and i may just spray especially since um like i said you don't want bugs sucking from one plant to the other. There's um, not a lot of scientific evidence that says like um, some of these diseases can be spread, some of them cannot. Um, but I figure why chance it? You don't want bugs moving between plants. It's just, it's never a good thing. But I'm also trying to not kill my, my little investment and my little experiment here. So I wanna go show y'all something that I know has thrips. And I put a bunch of the good mites on there. All right, guys, so here is the plant in question. When the first flower of this opened up the, a few weeks ago, I just ripped the flowers off. I said, to hell with it. Because, I mean, there was hundreds of thrips all over it. Um, and I have, a, I have a photo of that that I can in, insert into the video just to show you. And this is what thrips damage looks like, you know. It oftentimes shows up as these little brown margins and these little dead spots. They have a little piercing proboscis um, that they're sucking on the uh, all the phloem and xylem and all the nutrients that are in the cell walls. Um, I don't know, do we see any thrips? Yeah, there's one. It's going to be real hard to see on camera. Just rip that off. Let's see. Eh, little buggers are usually usually if you want to look for your thrips pull the pull the petals back they usually during the daytime when it's the hottest part of the day they will usually hide down here at the base um, here near the petiole or up in here underneath the anther cap you pull the lip down look down in here sometimes they're underneath the anther cap and with a GoPro I'm not going to be able to get a macro shot close enough that you can see the thrips 
but just take my word for it. I saw the little buggers uh, just a second ago. Uh, but there, that's what thrips damage is. And oftentimes it can cause color break um, where they're piercing the flower. And just because you see color break, just make sure the color break from thrips look, usually looks different from viral color break. Um, and usually with thrips damage, it's not only color break, but just general necrosis and dead tissues. Um, and you know, just um, all these callus and all this ugly damage. Those are always associated with it. And I did release quite a few mites. There's still a sachet here and I've sprinkled some of the good mites that supposedly eat thrips. Um, that was a few weeks ago. Uh, these flowers surprisingly don't look, even though these are god awful ugly. These are ugly as sin. They did not look as bad as the first flowers that opened. It was like a thrips party. I mean, there was just, they were just all hanging out in there having a great, great, great time. So, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. I don't want to, you know, say that this is a good thing, but like I said, this is kind of a running experiment um, and I'm doing it at my own, exp um, my own peril here with the collection, but just trying to see if these, these good, these good bugs can keep some of these guys in check and only time will tell, but you know, sometimes I change my mind. So I may, may one of these, one of these days get, you know, just fed up with it and come out here and say to heck with it and, and just spray everything, um, live or die, come what may to the good bugs. Um, cause I do, I love orchids. Um, but thrips are, thrips are nasty, man. Spider mites are bad too, but thrips, man, they just, they just, they ruin what you're trying to accomplish. They're ruining your, your flowers. Mites at least have the decency to just try and kill the whole plant. They're a little bit less selective. Mites will, especially broad mites, they will damage the developing spikes, but like red spider mites and uh, two spotted mites, they'll just cover the foliage and they'll just start causing just a general decline in the plant. But thrips, man, I hate thrips. They were growing these plants for the beautiful flowers. And it's like, oh, you wanted flowers? Well, let me just destroy that for you. Look at a little spider. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a little baby link spider or something. I don't know. I'm not an erect. What do you call somebody who studies spiders? Arachnologist? Is, is that the word? Or did I just make that up? But a little spider in there. Kill. Do spiders eat thrips? Probably not. Probably too small. But let's see. Look at all that thrip damage. Dendrobium just loaded with thrip damage. So spider mites, let's talk about spider mites. The Swarovski mites and the Californicus mites undoubtedly go after spider mites. And the first thing that you're gonna notice spider mite damage on is gonna be anything thin-leaved. So your certipodiums, your catastediums, your chromatophyllums, your oncidiums. Phalaenopsis get their own type of mite, which is a real sinister problem too. They have a whole different mite that usually affects them. The red spider mite will get on the, the Phalaenopsis, uh, but there's a type of mite that gets on the fails. It's just, it's terrible. And they usually cause that silvering of the foliage. Uh, but Grammatophyllums, they get it really bad. So that there, I don't want to break this leaf off because it's a new growth. That, that little patch of chlorotic spots there, um, I don't know how well it's going to show up on film, but that, that is spider mite damage. Uh, maybe not spider mite, it might be the two spotted mite because um, we have a lot of that. Uh, but it usually causes this weakening of the foliage. Things like Grammatophyllum, they have these real thin leaves that are real juicy, they're soft tissues, and it makes it real easy for mites to get a hold. Uh, so that's where they're usually praying. And with spider mites, they call them spider mites because they leave a web. Uh, not to mention that mites are really closely related to spiders, but the red spider mite will have this cobwebby stuff all over the underside of the leaf. And it looks like little tiny spider webs because that's basically what it is. Cattleyas too will get it. Sometimes it causes stuff like that. Whether this is mite damage, I'm not sure. Uh, but usually cattleyas don't, are not very susceptible to mite damage. Uh, they have very, very thick leaves. And usually if I see mites, um, I'm not usually too worried about my cattleya stuff. Because like I said, it doesn't usually affect them too badly. It's the, it's the things with the thin leaves. They will just decimate, 
decimate your catacetums and, and such things. And they can also damage flowers. And here's one of my favorites, the thing that I got to name. Uh, Beth Lamb made this hybrid and let me name it. This is Florida wildfire. It's beautiful, beautiful flower. But I've already noticed just a little bit of thrips damage. Not a whole lot, but a little. You know, this would definitely not be a judgeable plant. It's a good thing I don't take my plants into judging. And I'm not, and you know, it's kind of embarrassing to show this. You know, you've got these ugly flowers. But like I said, I'm, I'm doing this for the sake of an experiment to see how well some of these things work. Because this was the first one to open up a few weeks ago when the thrips were hot and heavy. And this one opened up just a couple days ago. And I don't see, I don't see too many, too many uh, thrips spots. You know, so I don't see too much damage here. So maybe that's just anecdotal evidence. Maybe that's me telling myself that the, the predators are doing something because this one uh, started opening when I had just released them. And this one opened up a few days ago. And I put a whole lot of those sachets in here with the mites, the good mites, I should say. Uh, so maybe this is some evidence pointing towards the good guys doing their job. But like I said, it could just be anecdotal evidence. Maybe I'm just telling myself what I want to tell myself. Um, here's uh, Luis Fuchs. Not a whole lot of damage. There you go. There is some damage. This is what usually mites and thrips will both cause this this brown necrosis on the uh, the petiole here where the flower attaches with this you know the ovaries here and where it attaches to the inflorescence um, they will cause that browning whether that's mite or thrips it's hard to say i'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably thrips damage but see i'm not i'm not noticing a whole lot of living thrips just from I have pretty good eyes. There's one in there. It's not going to show up on camera, but they, there's a, an adult thrips here at the base of this anther, um, at the base of the column where the lip attaches. There's one in there. I can see them moving around. Uh, but a few weeks ago, if you'd come out here, they were just swarming, man. You'd lift a lip open and there'd be like a hundred of them come out. And there's a little caterpillar. I hate those too. The little moth caterpillars, they lay their eggs and they just destroy the tips of uh, new flower spikes. I've noticed that, especially on Schomburgias, there's a little caterpillar that the moths lay and it turns out uh, they'll, they'll chew up the end of the spike and destroying any chance of the spike producing more flowers and they'll make a little cocoon and they are a menace. I don't want you to eat my plants. But I've been ranting and raving long enough and you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it. But I just wanted to let y'all in on my little experiment here. Let y'all know what's going on. Why does Tristan have such ugly flowers? He tells us to, to spray. Why is he not taking his own advice? Well guys, I'm just I'm just trying to see if I can get by without spraying. And the answer, that may be no, but time will tell. There's some thrips in there. Y'all aren't gonna be able to see it, but I can see them. So, there you go, guys. Uh, running experiment here at, uh, at Ingram Orchids of Moore. Uh, next week, it may be an update video on every orchid is dead because they've all been eaten to the ground by some pests and diseases. No, not likely, but um, but we'll see. Maybe the results will be good. Maybe we'll have to, uh, I know you're supposed to keep releasing some of these. You know, it's not just a one-time thing. You, you do an initial release followed up by every so many weeks you release more. So maybe that's what I'll do. Because who knows, maybe it got too hot and a lot of the beneficial microbes could have died. Probably not, but um, maybe there just needs to be more. You're, so, you're supposed to release them so many square feet. Uh, um, so many of the good guys per so many square foot of growing space um, and i did try and put them pretty close together but for all i know they may just they may just need, need some more so i will keep you all updated and if i decide to just to say to heck with it and start just spraying on my normal routine again 
I'll let you know that too. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something. I hope I didn't bore you to death, but we'll see you next time for the next video. Thanks guys.